Hey guys, it's your girl Tower Crush back with another review and this time it is for Sisters on BET. If you haven't already, please hit my subscribe button down at the bottom. Thank you so very much and I want to get right into this review because again, like yesterday, this episode was super slow for me. Super slow, but we're going to cover it anyway because you know how we do. Okay, so let's get this review started. I first want to talk about Gary's milk dud head is and how he's just tripping over the fact that robin told him that he had the money in the account for the transaction the next day he lost his mind you know he called hayden and hayden's with old girl and you know she's pretty much rocking his world and he's just like um so what's up and you know gary's like well i found out the money's in the account and he got it wired from a gangster he took money from a gangster, and I don't think there's anything they can do about that, but just deal with it. Um, he's got the money in the account, so he will be keeping his business, and that's just weird, though, that he was able to find out all that information in that short period of time, right? Because he's at the restaurant, but he finds out that the money's in the account. Well, when Robin tells him it's in the account, then he goes and calls somebody, finds out it's a wire, it is in the account, where the wire came from, and what that person does. Really? Are we seriously thinking that this all happens in the process of like 10 minutes? Like, I can't. I can't with the writing. I just can't. But, you know, of course, Hayden tells Gary that the person he brought the money from was represented by Andy in a divorce um, case, and... She's probably the one that gave him the number. And of course, Gary gets upset. He calls um, Andy to see if he can come over tonight. She said she was on her way to sleep. And he's like, I just want to come over for a little while. And she says, okay, of course. Mind you, she's at the house with Fatima and, and Karen. Because Karen came over to interrupt their conversation. And, you know, Karen and, and Fatima had words back and forth. But I was really happy that Andy stood on her on her. You know, she stood on how she felt and she didn't let Karen bully her this time. And she let Karen know that she was out of line for the way she treated her and she didn't appreciate it. And, you know, when she basically told them both, I ain't going to betray you for her and I ain't going to betray her for you. So it is what it is. And I definitely agree with Andy. You can't tell me who to be friends with. You cannot tell me who to be friends with. Now, if me deciding to be friends with this person affects you in any type of way, you should let me know so that I can stop being your friend. If you feel like you can dictate who my friends can be. Because I can be a friend to more than one as well. And women fall out over stupid stuff anyway. So I'm not going to let a friend go because one friend is in a feeling. It's not going to do it. So I definitely felt Andy on that. And, you know, Karen did tell Fatima that she was pretty much over Zach. I don't believe it. Do you believe it? I don't believe it. Because she wouldn't have said, I kissed my child's father on the cheek. Why do you got to say all that? You don't even know if that's your child's father. I need to see this baby born. I need to see the DNA results. Until then, it's in the air. Because all of this, you can only get pregnant a few days out of the month. It's crap. You can get pregnant any time during the month. You're more likely to get pregnant when you're ovulating. But it can happen. Somebody can bust in you and that sperm stay up there for seven days. Seven days. So, you know, uh, I want to see the DNA. And so Fatima decided that she wasn't going to stay at Andy's, that she was going to go ahead and go home. And when she got there, of course, Zach was on the couch, you know, begging again. He's back to being begging Zach. I wish he would have stood on his principles and, and said, you know, I wasn't saying it like that. And you should have took it like that. And don't ever leave while we're arguing again. Anything can happen. Like, I just wish Zach would stand up more to Fatima because she ain't all that. She straight, she was way better in the beginning than she is these last few months because she, her insecurities are really getting the best of her and it is so unattractive and it's not what the viewers want to see. We don't want to see that. We don't want to see it. So I hope she gets it together really soon. But she did agree to, um, you know, stay at the house. and But she made Zach sleep on the couch, which I really feel like he shouldn't have had to sleep on the couch. If you don't want to sleep in the bed with me, you sleep on the couch. I bought them both, Okay. So, I'm going to choose where I sleep. So, I, I, but he was just happy to have her in the house or whatever. So, I guess if he like it, I love it. But I didn't like it at all. And I really hope we get old Fatima back. Now, she did take a phone call from Tamara. And 
basically Tamir was going to make Hayden drop Heather as a client. How's she going to do it? I don't know. But I don't know how Fatima feels like that's going to be enough because Heather is going to just get another lawyer. Unless you just write it so easily. Like, oh my goodness, my lawyer fired me. So I guess I better work it out outside of court. You know, <laughs> I cannot. But, you know, that's the plan with that. Now, moving right along. We have Aaron and, and Karen. And, you know, they have a short conversation. She's just basically making sure that he's okay because... He, you know, got beat up. And he's like, well, I put up a good fight. I promise you I'm okay. I just want him to just for once just be a real human being and not be this soft, I don't know, cotton ball that he is. He's just a cotton ball. He's always walking around as a cotton ball. I don't like it. I don't, I, his character, did something needs to spruce up with them, like, quick. But, you know, Karen was on her way to work. And then we have Sabrina. Sabrina got a call from Bayo. Bayo, the African with all the money, calls her to apologize again for telling her no to giving her money to get Maurice out. But he wanted some more, he had some more questions. So he asked, could he come over? Mind you, Calvin's in the house. Calvin's sleeping in the bed. And she's like, uh, can you give me 30 minutes? Yeah, because you need to get rid of that the guy before the other guy comes. Because if the other guy comes and he's still here, he might just turn around and leave and say, you know what? Get it from him. He ain't got number 22,000. He ain't gonna be able to do it. Help her out. Help us society out. <laughs> so she gets rid of Calvin, but not not with these because Calvin's like, well, you say you're doing this for for Maurice, but is it just for you or is it for you as well? Yes, yeah, for her. He's a rich man. Why shouldn't she explore? He's a rich man that has made no indications of wanting vibrators and dildos up his booty hole. So I think she should definitely give Bayo a chance, especially since he's going to give her this money to get Maurice out. I don't see why not. I just really don't see why not. Now, she's excited, of course, and she tells Calvin, but Maurice calls Calvin's phone to check on him to see how things are going. And, you know, of course, Calvin beats around the bush, but tells him eventually that Sabrina may be able to get the money to get him out from Bayo. And he's like, well, why would he do that? And she was like, he was like, she's effing him. <laughs> you know, Calvin didn't want to hear that. And we all know that Sabrina ain't doing nothing with her old timey self, but she was very excited. Okay, and then I just want to talk about Danny with her slut self. Now, of course, she's over there with Q in the bed and whatnot. So they done did the ooch coochie. And she done woke up, you know, with her skin crawling. Now she want him to leave. He ain't trying to leave. He keep on asking questions. Of course, he thinks he is the sexiest thing to ever walk the face of the earth. So no way in, in the world would she want him to actually leave. So he keeps asking, are you sure? You sure you don't want to get in the shower with me? Let's go make love in the shower. Boy, if you don't get your dirty self on up out of my house. And then he gonna tell her that he told his peoples where he was gonna be at. You, you don't have no peoples. It's called a PO. And your PO ain't allowed you to go and get no strange on an odd night. That just didn't happen. But she said, you got that monitor and they know where you at. You got to go. So he gets in the shower or whatever. And she, you know, after some time, of course, she had to convince him to go ahead and that she was serious. And she gets a phone call, of course, while he's in the shower. And who is it? It's Preston. What does Preston want, you ask? He wants to come over. He wants to come see her. He's at the coffee shop down the street. He just wants to come over. And she curbs him. No, you cannot come over. Preston, I've got to go to work. No, you cannot come over. And he was like, we well, see, I called first. And she's just like, why don't you just tell him you was being a little slut and you had somebody new at your house screwing you? Why don't you just say that, Danny? Oh, because he tried to marry, he tried to give you a ring to make you his fiance. And instead of saying yes, you just wouldn't screw the, the worst person in the world. The one that got your friend locked up. Like, girl, but we, it all comes out today. It comes out today. Because after she gets off the phone with Preston and convinces him not to come back, she hears her door opening and it is Sabrina. Sabrina comes in. She's like, well, dang. And she's like, well, I was calling you and you wouldn't answer the phone. Of course she wouldn't because she was with Q. 
And she tells Danny that, you know, she's come up with the money to get Maurice out. And she's very excited. But then she starts smelling. She's like, what's that smell? Who's in here? Who's here? Who's that? And so they're going back and forth. And Danny's kind of beating around the bush. And then here come Q out of the bathroom. And Sabrina's like, what are you doing here? And so now we're going to see how it all comes down. And I just wish that it didn't happen this way. I really seriously wish that it would have been a thing that Danny and Sabrina could have discussed Q and came up with some type of plot to get him to confess to his crimes. But of course, that would have been too much like, right? Um, so they're going to have this whole situation next week that we'll just have to wait and see how it comes out. But yeah, Danny's a whole slut. She should feel bad for not really screaming people before she screws them. She's pitiful. And if Preston knows what I know, he better run for the hills because she is not ready and she won't be ready for a very long time. She needs lots and lots of hours of psychotherapy. And I do mean psychotherapy because she's crazy, okay? She got to be to have somebody new in her house. That dog gonna quit. It is not that serious. Penis is not that serious. She needs to invest in a dildo. She needs to invest in a dildo. Maybe she can talk to Calvin and figure out where he gets his. I don't know. But I'm over her and her sluttish ways. So next week, we definitely see the fallout of that conversation. And we also see... Um, Fatima got a baby daddy? Wonder how they're going to work that out. And how did he even figure out where she lives? Because she ain't been living there that long. <clears throat> and I don't know. It's weird. But we're going to see... We're going to see where he writes this and where we go from here next week. But again, this was a very slow episode for me. It was over and I was like, I know it ain't nine, and I know it ain't 10 already. I said, I know it ain't 10 already. Didn't end up didn't happen yet. <laughs> but when he came out of the bathroom, I said, oh, I know this ain't the cliffhanger. This is the cliffhanger. I could not believe the episode was over because nothing really happened. But... That's all I have to cover for this week. And we'll have to see where it goes next week because it should be a little more juicy. Just a wee bit. So again, if you haven't already, please hit my subscribe button down at the bottom. Thank y'all so very much. And I will tell y'all, I don't know if I'm lucky or unlucky, but this year I am only getting $1,000 back on my taxes. 1,000 even. Why are you getting 1000 even, Tyra? Because I paid education expenses for my son and they're going to give me $1,000 for having to pay, you know, close to 20000 So thank you for my 1000 Nick. But that's it. That's all I'm getting. I ain't getting no state. <laughs> and I'm really not getting 1000 because I had to pay $79 to file. So <laughs> I don't know what the price is going to be next week, next month, but we are definitely going to do something for St. Patrick's Day. I will let you guys know exactly what it is. I don't know yet. I don't know what we're going to do. But we're going to do something nice and something fun. So y'all stay tuned for that. And again, don't be afraid to like, share, comment. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you being here. And if you are not the type that likes to subscribe, you know what? I get it. But you got to the end of this video. And that's more than I can ask of you or anybody else. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. or Mrs. Important. Hmm. And that is my $5 and two cents. Peace.